Welcome to iLecture Online and today we're going to show you how to take derivatives of trigonometric functions and just to remind us what they are, here are the six that we're going to learn how to take the derivative of and then later on I'm going to show some examples of how to do combinations of functions using these trigonometric functions. And starting out we're going to show you how to do the derivative of the sine of x and uh, we're going to use an algebraic technique where we take the limit of the function changed by just a little bit in the x direction minus the function at x divided by the delta and of course if you remember what that looks like for any function on the xy axis this is y this is x and we have some arbitrary function and we want to know what the slope is at that particular location then we can do that by taking a point that's adjacent to it finding the rise and the run the rise would be in this case the uh, function of x plus delta x or plus h minus the function of x uh, divided by h. h would be the change from x to x plus h right there. So this would, here would be h, that would be that. And so by using that technique and then taking the limit by bringing the two points very, very close together, we can actually find the derivative or in other words, the slope of that function. So in this case, we're trying to do that with the sine of x. And uh, so the first thing we're doing is using the identity where we have the sum of the angles for sine. So this can be written as the limit as h goes to zero of the sine of x times the cosine of h plus the sine of h times the cosine of x. <clears throat> that would be this expanded to this. And I, of course, need a little bit of room here to continue with my problem. So let's make this axis a little bit shorter. We then subtract the sine of x from that, and we divide the whole thing by h. And if we then evaluate that for h going to 0, that should give us a derivative. Well, let's see here. We have a sine of x here in this term. We have a sine of x there in that term. I'm going to factor out a sine of x. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the sine of x times the cosine of h minus 1. So I have taken these two right here and factored out a sine of x, and of course that's still divided by h, plus, now I have this term right here, where I have the sine of h times the cosine of x divided by h. <clears throat> and of course I need to put brackets around this, because the, taking the limit of course applies to the whole problem. Then I'm going to separate these two, and I'm going to write this as the limit as h goes to zero, of this portion alone <clears throat> and I'm going to write this as the sine of x times the cosine of h minus 1 over h. That's the same thing but it's written slightly differently plus the cosine of x over actually what I would like to do is I would like to separate this <clears throat> but the limit sine again, so we'll block this off, uh, plus the limit as h goes to zero of the cosine of x times the sine of h over h. And I'll put brackets around that so it looks a little bit uh, cleaner. All right, now we can go ahead and take the limit. Now without proving that, we can go ahead and prove that at some other time is that when you take the limit as h goes to zero of this, this whole thing goes to zero. So this is equal to the sine of x times zero plus, and here when we take the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h, that goes to one in the limit. So this is plus the cosine of x <clears throat> times one. I'll put the parentheses around it like that. Because then simply said, zero times this, that goes to zero, and then we're left with simply the cosine of x, which means that the derivative, which is what we set out to do with respect to x of the function sine of x, is indeed the cosine of x. And there, that's how you do that. All right, that's one down, five more to go.